Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Good afternoon members of the press. With a sense of relief, I would like to inform the nation through you, the press, that today, 3rd October 2022, we have managed to safely rescue Pamela Chisupa together with 12 other ladies that were held captive in a house in Charara area, Lusaka. This was after a protracted investigation that we have continuously pursued since April of this year when she was abducted around Cairo Road in Osaka. All the victims have been taken to a medical facility for quick medical attention. We have managed to apprehend one suspect who has been detained in our police custody to help us with investigations. We would like to call for calm amongst the general public as we wait for the victims to recuperate and further our investigations. A comprehensive statement will be issued in due course. I thank you so much. How did the girls come to knock on your door and what was your response? Okay, so the scene was that I was at home, I was watching TV, I was watching wrestling actually. Then there was a lady came with a, hitting the, our door, our gate, with a big stone, shouting, help, 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 help. So I came out, checked, and then she said that, because there were like the cops came last time looking for the same guys. And then she said that, uh, we are the people that were kidnapped. So that's how I ran, called my friend from the other neighbor and the other colleague of mine. We got an axe, then ran straight over the offense then all we just saw was the guy wearing black and from there he's just like i don't know if he vaporized or disappeared i don't know if he ran away i don't know so we started helping out the ladies taking them out helping uh, helping them out then we took out the pregnant woman out until everyone was safe though where they were, where they were where they came to pick them up was my place at the gate that's how we helped up everyone then we went inside then we found a casket there's a casket there there's a shrine this side there's um whatever i don't know maybe whatever that's the, the charms, there are a lot of charms, okay, inside, that's the thing. And there are, there are pads everywhere, condoms, they used to come kind of at the shop, that's like to buy pads and condoms all the time. Okay. Yeah, and we would get surprised, why are these guys buying such things and they are not actually f females? Oh, we would get surprised, we didn't know. And they look normal, very normal. And at what point did you call the police? The police, um, the police were called um, around 13, that was 13, then they arrived around, it should be 13, 50 something. Or 14 hours somewhere there that's when they arrived how many girls did you help out uh, move from uh, the place those were six approximate um, approximation should be eight or seven somewhere there they, they said that well, there, were, there was been a male now this lady said that she was killed so we don't know uh the person that whose uh, gate was uh, knocked on uh, the time that uh, by, by by one of uh, the girls very good. This person in here is a witch. Is a witch medalist. He 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 has been kidnapping women, locking them in here. Maybe I do much color. Look at the fucking coffee. Who fit this color? Coffee, me or coffee? Na puaka. Wa wa ma iba skalaba. Ah, Mona Mon, a cat in Cashirainak, called the Monaca Cadillac, a second rain. Provence Cashos. What is all about guy? Coffin, this is a coffin. Tell you almost some of it. Didn't buy you win it, come, Mazak. That's been a ten chisu. I'm sure they did dead body here. Eh? <laughs> 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 
I'm telling you. Expedite the process of facing justice. Uh, for instance, if you are a suspect and uh, please have uh, enough evidence that uh, you are a suspect and connected to that particular case, then uh, you need to see your time in court in as f uh, quick as possible time so that uh, you face uh, the law and uh, find uh, lawyers, if any, to represent you and defend yourself correctly and without any intimidation and that no one should go to prison without a trial and so this is perhaps the only benefit that the, for the suspect will be uh, exposed to as there seems to be that renewed hope by the Zambia police itself to ensure that um, everything is done according to the constitution and the people see their day in court within uh, 48 hours or you are charged within that time and then you are sent to court and uh, some cases uh, unfortunately cannot be bailed 
sword out or fortunately on the other side because the law is a two-way sword and a two-sided sword actually and so you, you it depends which one favors you and which one does not favor you but sometimes it goes against you sometimes it goes in line with what you want but the constitution definitely does provide that uh, suspect is taken to court as quick as possible so that they see their day in court and provided that the state has enough evidence they need to present those facts so they us take hope feeds that we're getting at the moment uh, who seem to be uploading the role that the media has uh, played as well uh, particularly those that are sending out those direct messages to prime tv for the role that uh, it has played in as far as uh, covering this case because uh, definitely we never went to sleep and uh, we're making sure that uh, we uh, send out that information and we appreciate all the good uh, uh, will messages that we're getting from this case and perhaps the pressure that came from the media uh, you know kept the police working and running day and night 24 7 and so this is what it should be and what we guarantee you going forward but it's been a tedious process here as you can see people are waiting and uh, what they're waiting for now is uh, who are they what were they doing with who and uh, when and for how long those are some of the questions that we have at the moment and so you can see quite a number of people giving interviews people being interviewed and so on so this is what uh, we can uh, report to you at the moment but later on there will be that uh, particular uh, statement uh, comprehensively uh, to be given out by the Zambia police as for now we keep bringing you these live visuals and without propaganda Just jump over, then I noticed that um, the guy that's there, as, like I don't know if he's like vaporized or whatever, he wasn't no longer there. So then we just need to help him out, everyone come out so that we just know after we put everybody, um, if everybody is safe, everybody is happy, then we can now go inside. Then we went inside, checked out the casket and everything. How long did the police arrive to take the report? An hour. So. Okay, not basically an hour, but the time that they put them, the time that they came was about within 30 minutes, but it took us maybe an hour to get to contact. Because I, I tried to call fly, I tried to call flying squad number were like busy, tried to call in this this until all of us who were calling managed then they came. The, um, the ones from Goldfish that were the first ones to arrive. Then the ones from Kawata, then these others are not quite sure where they are. Was the casket open to check what is in Yeah, there was like a red box. <laughs> it was a red box, like a weird red, red, red box. Something like that. We don't know what it is, but it was just like a box. Your name? Yeah, my name is Arobi. Arobi Chitam. Sorry, okay, let me ask one last question. Uh, so the ones that have been arrested, are there some who have escaped or have gotten rid of everyone? Those that have been what? Who have been... Uh, uh, how many have been arrested and how many have Okay, been? I wouldn't say arrested. Someone has just, one of them has just been taken into custody because he's the, he's the son to the landlord, but the mother died used to the landlord, so he's now the landlord. So, so he was just taken into custody, not actually arrested. Because you can't charge someone without further investigation. So they just want to ask him some questions. He's been taken into custody. And this guy was in the main house? Yeah, the main house. So these girls were in the where are they in the main no, house? They've got or? like a tenant's house where they like rent this side. So this is where they were they were. It's about self-contained actually. Tell us more about this area. Me, I for one I know that this area is not safe, especially in the entrance. You know, you know, this this area is safe actually, it's a very quiet place. But you know, 
Well, um, it's it, it, people like those, especially people who are serial killers, rituals. They can't go somewhere where like a lot of people they they, they target those quiet places to avoid the attention. So it is normal for those type of people to be like, in a place like this. But this place is it's quiet. It's not that quiet. It's a situation of such. You know, someone being killed. It's, it's rare. Maybe I mean, once in a while we hear someone was attacked there, things like that. But it's actually a peaceful place. Tell us about police presence here. The police, so they, um, the police they, they normally come and it's good that they normally come to inflict fear on those that are doing wrong things so that people know that the police anytime they can come here. Do you want a police station to be nearby? A police station? Yeah, we would like a police station to be nearby because the nearest police station, um, we don't have actually a police station but there's a police post there close but it's not yet open so I think we should open it. Okay, so we are still here in uh, Chalala area uh, where uh, it is believed that uh, Pamela Chisupa and uh, some other girls have been found here uh, in Chalala by the police. Now, I want us to just have a very short interview with a young lady who's related to one of the girls that, you know, has been rescued by the police here in uh, Chalala. Um, Maybe you can give us you can give us your name and uh, just tell us exactly what happened here. My name is Chikwanda Walia. Yes, so my young sister is Chikwanda Walia, one of the victims, the girls who've been abducted inside here. So she's been missing for three weeks. So we tried informing the police, we tried informing everyone and doing everything possible because obviously someone who's been missing for three weeks from school, it was bad. So today, actually yesterday we received calls from the kidnappers demanding for ransom saying no the girls are sick we want money for the the girls otherwise you'll find a head on the gates that's the that's those are the things they're telling us threatening us so they were rushing to the police and everything so now we're to Shilanga police that's when we have received a call saying one of the girls has escaped jumped over the fence which was my sister she managed to jump over the fence and to alarm the neighbors behind they are telling them that this is what has happened and this is what's happening inside so by the time one of them the the guy who's there who managed to rescue them he went to the other side that's how he managed he said he saw someone wearing all black that just disappeared so yes after that that's how the other girls managed to rush to the police and they managed to rescue the other ones maybe i can just take you a little bit backwards maybe just just give us uh, the inf information on how your sister went missing what really transpired okay so she goes to a boarding tuition center in waterways yes so every weekend she comes home but that friday she didn't come home so we we didn't know about that because it didn't follow up i was actually my mom wasn't in the country my sister wasn't around so it didn't follow up but she told me she might come or she won't come so afterwards on a tuesday that's when the friend called me and said is she at home then i was like no she's not at home isn't she at school then she said she's not at school and she's not been at school so that's how i got worried i started asking relatives around did tawanda come here did tawanda come here and i asked the friends on social media and everything so that's how that was the last time we communicated with her all right thank you so much okay thank you okay so uh you've got it uh the, the whole story of what actually happened but we still wait for the police to give us uh a conclusive report of exactly how many people have been arrested and how many girls uh, you know have been you know rescued uh, from this operation that was led by the inspector general of police uh, mr lemi kajoba so for now we still wait for a report from the police and uh, after that of course we'll be able to inform you the nation uh, exactly what
So there we have it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, quite a number of interesting uh, angles that are coming out. Uh, people stepping forward to give out that uh, uh, information and uh, very moving. Yeah. And uh, we've heard so far uh, some saying that they didn't know what was happening around here. But uh, there were quite a number of people that have been helping out unknowingly. And they've been suspecting, uh, you know, uh, shorty, shorty deals around here. And the gray areas have been highlighted. And uh, hence uh, some of those uh, connectors that uh, uh, fed information to those that were looking for it. And in this case, we're talking about the Zambia police that has been investigating this issue for some time now. I can imagine the uh, top, top of issues in as far as the Ministry of uh, uh, Home Affairs and Internal Security have been handling uh, their officers uh, because sometimes some issues bring out uh, this whole issue of people calling names and some will say that you need to step down for uh, failing to bring out uh, to, to conclusion or putting closure to such cases and uh, this one has definitely been a marathon of a story and uh, while wow, this had uh, raised a number of issues and questions regarding the operations of the Zambia Please. they know so far and uh, what they saw and uh, what now has uh, well uh, put itself that kind of a picture behind the uh, questions and the silent questions that have been going on sometimes you pass through you don't know who stays behind these walls and uh, well sometimes they're good for security but sometimes they're good uh, for uh, certain uh, people such as those suspected abductors uh, to hide something from the eye of the public so at the moment, uh, those are some of uh, the issues that we have. But, uh, you can see a number of people have come out uh, abandoning their respective uh, you know, duties and responsibilities to ensure that they have uh, first-hand information of what's happening here and just uh, play a part to what is happening as far as the issue of uh, abduction is concerned of Pamela who went missing in April. Of course, it sent in a number of uh, you know, emotions. At the time that she went missing, we were issues of uh, uh, could she be alive? Uh, could be, uh, she be dead? Or anything could have happened to her. But also, what would be interesting is to get what has been happening to her from that time until uh, where we are at the moment with this particular issue. But it has been a marathon, like I did indicate. It has been a big, big issue that uh, brings out quite uh, a number of uh, strengths in certain people uh, to be able to be up in good health, especially for the mother, for the for, for the brothers, for the sisters, uh, for. For the fiancé, uh, we'll call him today, who's been, uh, you know, keeping up and obviously has been um, wondering what could have struck around for that story because he's been a recipient of information demanding for money uh, in terms of ransom for her to be released for her freedom. And uh, sometimes you'd want to uh, ask those that were coming forward to say, this is the money we are ready, let's find. I think that was the most difficult time as well because you have the money at hand and uh, what mattered now was how do you deliver, who do you give the money to and uh, remember uh, about two months ago as well there was an issue of um, a mobile phone that was picked at the dam site by a, a, a juvenile who actually presented that phone to, to the parent but the parent uh, well, instead started uh, benefiting from that particular cell phone uh, at the time that police grabbed it or, con or confiscated it from her she said it had no sim card but uh, uh, according to investigations at that time uh, they said it could be connected to the abduction of Pamela because the SIM card was not there, but the phone was there. But what went in around that uh, phone, we had to still get the full details because they did not disclose for fear of jeopardizing investigations. inside the building as well as other suspects in line with this uh, uh, case here and so quite a number of questions are still being brought out and uh, well what these people I can tell you uh, waiting for is uh, to have a glimpse of Pamela from the time that she went missing very young girl very intelligent girl very entrepreneurial and uh, you could see her efforts from the mobile money booth that she was operating uh, she did not want to join a number of uh, those that were demanding for jobs without trying uh, you could see that there was effort being made by the young lady but unfortunately she was taken in that uh, was part of uh, the part of the story where people became very very 
emotional and uh, well touching if you ask me because uh, well she did not want to do any illicit activities apart from trying out to do something at least and unfortunately those abductors uh, took advantage of her effort and uh, they took her in but uh, we had to see headways being made from this particular story here So sometimes when digging information, you really have to be strong because uh, what we've seen, uh, well, our colleagues are uh, uh, boarding the mission here. They say they've been here for too long and they need to get back to their respective news houses. And so we're just laughing over that uh, because uh, sometimes you need to, uh, you know, get us quick information as possible but you know with police sometimes it could be uh, very frustrating but rightly so because their job entails that you cannot talk anyhow without data and so you need that evidence and so we're trying as prime tv as well to just uh, hold on and uh, make sure that we give you what you need to know because we've seen so many questions being asked on our live feed as well as we interact on this issue uh, people wanting to know how the condition in which our family, our family has been found how's uh, well that she gets that she lost weight what has she been feeding on and so on who's been buying that food and uh, uh, just how you know just how has she been locked all, al uh, all along from the time that she was abducted uh, was she able to go out was she moving freely and so on has she been confined in those uh, you know walls and so on well those are some of the questions that people are asking and uh, we guarantee you that you will have those questions asked. So when you come to think of it, you'd want to ask who did not talk about this story. Uh, different stakeholders were talking about it. The church came out, the civil society organizations came out, as well as uh, prominent on this issue who's been commenting so much is, uh, uh, you know, one uh, Mwinga who is an activist has been calling on police to actually deal with certain cases. And, uh, well, police has been uh, saying as well that uh, they were working on this case. And so we'll see. Uh, perhaps pressure from the civil society and uh, well sending it straight to the police that has been the issue that has been uh, keeping them on their toes to make sure that they do uh, the job that they are being uh, you know called police for and well rightly so and uh, will be interesting to hear now going forward what would be the issue and uh, well one other issue that would be interesting to learn is how exactly is um, the family going to receive this issue but as we report to you right now no wonder we're not doing any interviews with them is that uh, they've been told not to comment on any other issue until everything is concluded but um, we can tell you as well that there's an element of um, well security issues as well no wonder uh, we, we've been told to report from outside these premises as uh, Pamela is still being questioned as well as uh, well just investigating generally over this piece here that we have but it's been hours already and uh, well quite a number of media houses have voted the mission and uh, well for, for Prime TV we will stay and we will stay until the last minute. So what we can report to you as well is that uh, medical help has been um, uh, well supplied as well within uh, these premises here to just make sure that she's in good health and uh, if anything then they will definitely uh, indicate as well. So questions of who's been collecting rentals from this house is also another big question I must say. But uh, well, all those questions will be answered and perhaps that was one of the first issues that police are trying to connect. Who owns this property? Who is the landlord? Or do those suspects actually own this huge property here? And then others are asking uh, why would uh, they start asking for ransom if they are the owners of this big house here. Very, very huge house if you ask me and so on. So those are some the questions that will be answered shortly but we'll continue hanging on and to give you the necessary information and the details that you need to know what is going on here
Okay, so we are still in uh, Chalala and uh, let's talk to one of the parents of the uh, girl who was abducted here and uh, he'll just tell us, you know, what he feels that, uh, you know, his daughter has been found and exactly what transpired. Maybe you can just narrate to us uh, the ordeal of everything of what happened. So you can introduce yourself and uh, uh, just tell us how you feel that now your daughter has been found today. My name is Mikey Ajintu. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm feeling divided. Instead of enjoying when I saw my daughter, uh, I'm so disappointed. I didn't manage to celebrate. Because of the condition, you know, how my daughter was found, the place where they were found. It's a house which is, uh, you know, within two minutes when I entered into, into that house, I started sweating. Because the condition inside that house is very bad. The house is tinted, the windows are tinted, and there is no fresh air, no ventilation. So now imagine, my daughter uh, went missing on 16th September, which is two weeks, and uh, she has been in that house with such a very bad condition. No beds in that house, no blankets in that house, very dead house. And it's so disappointing that, you know, a human being can do such a thing. Especially that, uh, you know, can keep human beings with a coffin inside the house. That is something terrible. Maybe you can tell us how your daughter went missing. You know, my daughter is at a certain institution school. And uh, we thought uh, she was at school because, she, you know, she's uh, doing boarding from that same place. So we didn't realize that she went missing until after three days or so. That's when one of our friends told us that, no, my colleague is not here at school. So we thought, you know, children, maybe they just went missing. We took it so... We didn't take it so serious. But the fourth day, I think we became worried. We said, no, 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 my daughter has no history of such kind. So we decided to go and to report that case to Chaoma police. We went with the officers at Chaoma police trying to investigate here and there. We managed to get a taxi which picked them. And that taxi driver was interviewed by the police officers. Uh, we even visited the scene, which the taxi driver said he dropped them. But there was no much uh, no information which was leading to them to be found. Yes, then th some officers also from Chilanga police, they were involved, very good officers. And this one I emphasize on this platform. Those officers from Chilanga CID, I think the IG need to do something. They did a tremendous job. From Saturday, I think up to date, they were not sleeping. I was with them on the ground. Without them sleeping during the day and night. I think he, the IG, if he sees this clip, please need to do something. They did a very commendable job. You know, it was like they were also their children. They were feeling the same impact which we had. So, you know, when we have, we have such police officers in the service, we just need to recommend them. Sure. Uh, any words you have to uh, the police that you are carrying out this particular operation? What word do you have for them? You know, this is uh, looking first of looking at the scenario where you know it came from the issue of Pamir and all such kind of things. It is something which has been happening for a long time. I think the police were on uh, the ground, but I uh, just emphasize to them that this is not a small issue. There are so many people involved. They just need to do a proper investigation till the truth comes out. Because as at now, I can't say a lot to the police side because the issue is still under investigation. Sure. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, you've got it from uh, one of the parents to uh, the girls who, you know, uh, was found today by the police. So we still await, as I earlier stated, we still await for the official report from the police. Maybe we can just, uh, you know, uh, take a walk and maybe see what's happening on the other side. As you can see, um, uh, a crowd of people uh, moving towards the police land cruiser. So maybe we can just uh, take a walk and see exactly what is happening on the other side. Um, uh, I'm sure my colleague Elias Limwanya mentioned earlier on that uh, we've been here for, <laughs> for uh, two hours or so and uh, you know, we need to rush back and uh, you know, uh, write those stories for your viewers. So um, let's just take a look. You know, uh, what is actually happening on the other side? You know, out of curiosity, 
Um, maybe we can take a look at what is happening. So we have uh, the Honorable Member of Parliament for Kawata Constituency, Honorable Taengwa, is equally here. Uh, he came in, uh, I think, an, um, uh, an hour ago. Maybe you can try and see if we could squeeze in an interview. We also have um, the Honorable Member for Petauke, Honorable JJ Banda, who's, who's equally here. So, um, uh, as you can see, uh, obviously they're having a, a, you know, um, uh, a, a video, I don't know if it's a video call, an interview. So we are waiting to see if we, can, uh, you know, we could capture a moment with them and maybe have uh, an interview with uh, the two Honorables on uh of course what exactly transpired here and uh you know what information they've been given uh, uh by the police so in picture you can see that we have uh you know uh, honorable taengwa there as well as honorable jj uh emmanuel jj banda uh, member of parliament for uh petauke uh constituency so um he's 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 one of the member of parliament uh, who uh, actually reported this matter? I remember when uh, you know uh, the issue of Pamela Chisupa was actually at its peak. So he he actually uh, went to the police and reported this matter to the police as well as a concerned citizen, as well as uh, you know uh, 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 the member of uh, member of parliament. So uh, one more thing, we are just in prayer. Okay, so uh, maybe we can have a word with uh, the Honourable Member of Parliament for Petauke, uh, uh, Honourable uh, JJ Banda. Honourable, thank you so much for joining us on this uh, interview. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, my name is uh, Emmanuel J. Banda, Member of Parliament for Petauke Central Constituency, and also a, 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 a Member of Parliament in the August House, also who is a Chief Whip for Independent. Honourable Member, I remember. Uh, you are one of uh, the concerned citizens who reported this matter to the police uh, during its peak and now the police have finally succeeded in rescuing Pamela Super and uh, some of the girls. Just tell us your feeling, how do you feel today? No, I'm, um, in fact I'm the happiest person I've seen because uh, even that time when I'm sure you remember I was at UTH, from UTH I went to HQ to, um, yeah, to intervene in this matter. I, I spoke with uh, the IG that time and then the IG assured me to say no, 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 they'll be on it. And then I even went to the officers to give statements. I got the family members who went to give out statements and indeed we, they promised to say we are on it. And, uh, and these are the results and the faith which we had that time. Yes, indeed, it has shown, and uh, kudos, thanks a lot to the Zambia police for doing their, uh, this wonderful job. They need, um, they need to be recommended by each and every Zambia. You, you've, you've taken a walk, I'm sure, in uh, that particular house where the girls were being kept. Maybe, you know, uh, how did you look at the situation? How, how was the place looking like? Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, I've seen, but uh, uh, apparently now investigations are still going on, so we can't just say whatever we have seen there inside. First, we need first to give the, um, the security wing or the police who are doing their job first. That's when, because it can also jeopardize their job. So at the moment, we need first to give them time. And the, these, the policemen, they need our support at this moment. Each and every Zambian is supposed to be to give support, to lend a support to the to the police. So this is what we are doing. I'm sure that's why you have seen the member of parliament is here, also uh, Honorable Taengwa for Kawata and all the councillors for um, uh, for Kawata constituents are here also. Yeah. Thank you so much, Honorable Member of Parliament uh, for Petawak. I don't know if there's any other word that you'd love to add to the viewers watching us now. No, uh, to me, I can just say, everyone who is watching, please let's keep on praying for Mother Zambia because God is the creator of each and everything. Without God intervening, we, this thing, we are not going to discover the, um, the children. But because all the Zambians, they have been playing, praying to God, to the Almighty God. That's why God has opened the door today to, for the girls to be discovered. So continue praying so that all those bad things, they should come to an end into our country. Zambia is a Christian nation, and as uh, it is a Christian nation, uh, everything should move according to the Christian values. 
this is what we want. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Emmanuel J. Banda, Member of Parliament for Petaoke Constituency. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, take a walk again. Maybe we could talk to one of the councillors uh, for this particular constituency. Uh, maybe you can, you can also, you know, add uh, you know, uh, his word. Uh, councillor, thank you so much for your time. Maybe just uh, tell us the general feeling of how you're feeling today. I know you're one of the concerned, uh, you know, Zambians when it comes to the issue of uh, Pamela Super. How is the general feeling? How are you feeling? Sir? We are very elated. We are very relieved that uh, at long last our prayers have been answered. Pamela has been found alive along with uh, 10 others. Uh, so we are, we, are very, we are very, very elated, we are very, very happy. But of course uh, we are yet to confirm because there's a report that uh, one or two of the girls were actually killed and uh, buried behind in that backyard. So it's really a day of mixed feelings. We, we, we are in consolation with um, the families of those girls who might have died. We don't know who they are right now, but we are equally happy and elated and excited that at long last uh, this uh, saga of kidnappings has come to an end with of course uh, one suspect I'm um, told who's already been um, apprehended. I hope that uh, there is going to be an immediate hand, manhunt and I know and I trust that there is a manhunt to discover the other three that are on the run. But all in all we are glad that this saga has finally come to rest uh, with um, ten of the girls being rescued. And of course, um, as you can see, there are several people here who are concerned, who have been very vocal and um, who have uh, tried their level best, including our Honorable MP and the area councillors for Kawata. They are all here. All that we would like to say is uh, thank you very much to the neighbours that uh, really helped these girls escape because they had a very small window to escape. One of them actually was drunk, we are told, and uh, he tried to rape one of the girls who managed to escape and called for help. The neighbours came to their rescue and managed to pull out all the... 10 or so girls and reported to the police. So we are, we, we, we are very thankful to that uh, brave uh, young man and his family that has uh, contributed to the rescue of these girls. We were waiting to hear from the police how um, the day unfolds in terms of uh, hunting down the remaining three. But one is already in custody, we are told, and uh, we hope from him we can get to discover this syndicate of kidnappings, how fight went, who was responsible, and hopefully bring the culprits to book. The citizens were obviously becoming impatient with the police in terms of how they are carrying out the investigations, the speed at which these investigations were being carried out. What word do you have to the Inspector General of Police and his team, especially the, the group or the team that we are conducting this particular you know, investigation? What word do you have for them? I think the police are heroes today. They deserve all the kudos. Uh, of course, uh, you know when the matter started dragging, a lot of people lost hope. Six months had gone by, there were no results, there were no leads. But we were consist consistently assured by the police that investigations were ongoing. And I think today the police has been vindicated. I think they have shown their pro professionalism, they have shown their consistency. All they needed was a lucky break. And that's why we keep on saying as civic leaders that uh, the issue of policing, the task of policing, is not just to the police themselves, but also the community. Because if you look at what has happened today, it was because of the effort of the community, elect members of the community, that played their role and uh, ensuring to say that this place was discovered and uh, the girls were rescued. And the police, of course, did come in and um, finally uh, took, over, uh, uh, took over the show. So we are thankful to the police. They have been vindicated. And I think uh, we should continue to work in hand in hand with the police in all matters that concern security. Because at the end of the day, security is not just a responsibility for the police, but also the communities and stakeholders involved. Thank you so much, Councillor, for uh, your time. Thank you. All right. So uh, you've got it yourself. Uh, this is exactly what is happening. I was hoping to have a word with uh, the Member of Parliament for Kabwata constituency, but uh, of course it seems, yeah, it seems he's uh, trying to make his way out. Uh, maybe I can, I can have maybe a word or two with him. Let me see if I can catch him unaware uh, for him to actually have a word with us. Uh, How are you? Okay. You are in my ward, you don't hear from me in my own ward. Okay, thank you. Right. <laughs> okay, so maybe we can also speak to uh, our councillor here. Uh, maybe we can just come this, uh, this side, uh, councillor. Um, my concern, obviously, in your ward, let's talk about the issue of security. Uh, how, how, are we going to, how are we going to progress, you know, going forward? People seem to be scared in your ward. Look, we, we will 
continue because recently we have been forming neighborhood watches to assist us with this. Uh, with the security situation that we have. So we have had some neighborhood watches who have been in contact with Chilenja police uh, and the other police stations so that we can intensify security within the area. It is something that we are looking at and uh, we hope with the neighborhood, uh, with the community coming together with the police and myself and the area member of parliament, at least we can make this area safer. But uh, obviously where we are now, it's not a place where we would have expected to find uh, these ladies. It's quite shocking, it's very far. I mean, I stay very near this place myself. So, but I'm happy that at least the, the, the ladies have been rescued and uh, I'm hoping, quick, hope, quick, uh, wishing them a quick recovery in the current situation. Obviously this is uh, a joyous day for a lot of citizens. What's your general feeling as well? How are you feeling today? I'm happy. I'm very, very happy that uh, it's, uh, it's, we've got this ending. But if you see the circumstances, like I've had a chance to go inside and see how these ladies were being kept. It is not, it's not a pleasant sight. It's not a very pleasant sight. Uh, it's, it's just, I'm just happy that they, they were able to at least, they had the strength to go on and just uh, stay alive. And the good thing is that at least we have found them, they're here. Uh, kudos to the police for doing their work, to the community, everybody that has helped in assisting to finding these ladies. Yes. Thank you so much for your time, Councillor. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, that's uh, some information we are giving to you live here in Chalala, where you know uh, uh, police uh, have actually you know uh, arrested uh, some suspects here. But of course, uh, still waiting for the statement from uh, the police, uh, where we are you know going to inform you of exactly what happened here. Um, Elias, we take it up. Uh, of course, uh, uh, giving more details of uh, exactly what is happening. Uh, obviously, for us here, uh, we can call it uh, a day as we await for police to give us a full statement of what exactly transpired here. My name is Mianda Kembe. Uh, I'll take you back to the studio. Thank you. Right, interesting uh, views coming in from uh, people in there and uh, prominent among them is uh, a ward councillor in that uh, particular area and uh, well, what uh, we can tell you is uh, we've also heard from JJ Banda, Emmanuel Banda that's one of uh, the concerned man members of parliament who first reported the issue of uh, Pamela and uh, he was one of the people that came out uh, to actually report on the issue of um, uh, giving money to those that needed it uh, for the freedom of uh, Pamela and so this is what we uh, can uh, tell you for now as we continue bringing you live these pictures from Chalala area in Lusaka where the abduction of Pamela and uh, 12 other girls uh, you know have been kept here and so uh, prominently of course that what comes out is a uh, Pamela being uh, you know abducted uh, but uh, in between April or in between the time that she went missing there's been a number of other girls that have been abducted as well and uh, so Pamela just one of them but uh, maybe uh, she came out so prominent in this issue because of uh, uh, the, the, the time period that she's been missing and in between there's been other girls that have been abducted and well two we are told so far buried behind the yard in there and so there's an issue of exhuming those bodies and to just uh, find out who exactly they were and what exactly um, you know has been uh, uh, the case regarding those Okay, so there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, this is uh, a developing story, and so we'll be uh, making sure that we get that statement uh, by the Zambia police after all is uh, investigated behind those walls. And I know that a number of you are hoping, uh, you know, have a wish if those walls could talk, but unfortunately, they cannot talk, and uh, they could have told us what has been going on in as far as the abduction of 13 girls, among them Pamina Chesupa, Mobile Maria Agent who went missing in April and so we heard from one of the parents whose child was abducted as well 
in September narrating how painful it's been and just uh, the few seconds that he entered that house where the girls were being kept he sweated and uh, he could imagine now for those girls living in that condition and so for now we'll uh, leave it here we'll be uh, giving you details in our news bulletin coming up later on at 1915 my name is Elias Limonia very good afternoon enjoy the broadcast this is DJ Mutati exclusive Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.